welcome to each and every one of you and thank you Sadhguru in advance for giving us this uh, session where you're going to be guiding us through uh, towards the rebuilding of the nation and new avenues for real estate in these challenging times. Dr. Niranjan Hirandani to ask his question. He is the National President of Redco. Namaskaram, Guruji. It's such a pleasure and privilege to be here today. You know, I'm a great admirer of yours. And one of the things which I admire the most is your concept of rejuvenation of rivers and the plantations of trees to give life to this country, not only to agrarian, but actually to bring back India into the forefront in terms of rejuvenation of life by itself. Okay. Guruji, uh, we as builders have a great vision about our cities as uh -huh. all people would love to do as nation builders. And you have given us this kind nomenclature of saying that we should be nation builders. But what have we done? Our great cities have actually turned into slums. 50% of our people living in a city, which is the richest city in India, has got 50% of them live in Jhopatpatis. Our infrastructure is collapsing. Roads, transport are just not there. Can you, Guruji, give us some idea of what you think should be our vision and the roadmap? Because we may dream a lot of things, but what's the first steps that we really need to do in order to make this change, wherein our great cities, which we always had, would actually turn back and really become great cities again? Maybe the same idea as rejuvenating of rivers and bringing about some concept. Maybe you could guide us and tell us what this kind of vision should also be there so that before the end of my life, I take the first step in that direction. Uh, the first step. <laughs> What's the full name? I'm sorry, Hirnandani. Niranjan. 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 Uh, Niranjan, the first step that needs to happen is, let me give a little context before I say this. See, today uh, it's estimated that about 76 to 78 percent of the world's investment is in actually 32 cities in the world. That means investment is so focused in some places, naturally people tend to move in that direction. Before the virus, the estimate was in the coming decade, that is by 2030 in the world, 1.6 billion people will migrate. In India, 220 million people will migrate in the next ten years. Tell me which city is capable of mopping up that kind of population. As you're saying already, in Mumbai, 42 to 44 percent of the population is living in slums. But it's not just Mumbai, I want you to understand the whole country is a slum. If you come to the villages, you will see the whole nation is living as a slum. This is simply because it is unplanned and it simply happened over a period of time. We are an ancient nation, simply it's grown like that. So, at some point we must have the courage to replan and redesign the country, not just go on living the same way. So as a part of this, I have given these plans to some of the builders. Well, in the international forums, I have presented this, hugely appreciated everywhere, but nobody has done it yet. So, Niranjan Bhai, if you are willing to do it, let me talk about it <laughs> I'm promoting a concept called one building city, just one building, a city. For example, I'm just throwing the numbers off the cuff, we, you can reimagine the numbers uh, based on various other realities. Let's say we take fifty acre plot, it need not be within the city, you can put it out fifty kilometers away from the city, even up to hundred kilometers, Anywhere between fifty to hundred kilometers you can go, fifty acre plot, land-wise it will come cheap compared to what you pay in cities. Now in this fifty acres, you build only one acre, two FSI is anywhere there, so you build, uh, you know, nearly hundred floors you can build if you want. Forty-nine acres of land, you just make it into trees, ponds, walking spaces, beautiful atmosphere like a forest for people to live there. In this… in these hundred floors, you can make residential accommodations, offices, shopping, school up to seventh standard, eighth standard, after that they can go out. Generally, people who live there, 
just live there, work there, everything there, they shop there, whatever. Once a week, if they wish to drive their automobile out, they can go. No waste, no input, everything generated there and everything done there. No question of sewage going out, nothing. Everything can be managed right there. Above all, people will get to live in a verdant atmosphere, forest. Right now, look at the way our children are growing up. How do you expect them to grow up as sensible human beings? If they step out of their homes, they are walking straight into the traffic. There is no place to play, there is no place to kick a ball, there is no place to run around. There is nothing, they are just cooped up in their apartments, watching televisions or, you know, People are saying, why are they all watching a, on the, the, the screen? Tell me, where is space for a child to go and run ca carefree? If he runs carefree, he will get killed within two days. It's happening all the time. So, we need to build cities like this. This is very much possible, particularly if you can sell it to the idea to, let's say, an IT st companies are the easiest to go for. An IT company can build residentials, uh, working spaces, shopping, schooling, everything right there and forty-nine acres of just forest, never to be tampered because anyway you complete the two FSI, it's a done thing. If we… whether it can be fifty acres or twenty-five acres, but the same proportion if you go for. And the villages, right now a local village here, we're close to us, with a population about six thousand people, it occupies anywhere between to be fifteen to twenty acres or twenty-two acres, somewhere in that range. This village, the conditions in which they are living, human beings, animals, everybody living together, we can build a city like this for them, a village which is tall, only thing is they must come together. How to bring them together, can you bring all these people together? If we set up one or two examples and people see that they can live way better this way, they can be cattle shed separately, animals, people can live in apartments, about ownership and other things, we can sort out all those issues. If this is done, this is the only future for us because for 1.4 billion people, we don't have enough land to build independent houses all over the place. That is only for a small percentage of people. Rest of them will anyway have to live in tall buildings, but now there are thousand rules about everything and it doesn't go to escape these rules, people are building shorter buildings all over the place. So this has to change and if we make one city, one building is one city by itself. In a building about five to ten thousand people live, that's a city by itself, this city doesn't drive out every day, except a few people who have to go out. Most people work there, live there, go to school there, everything is settled there. Once in a way, just for their… you know, whatever their own pleasure and joy, they want to drive somewhere, they can always drive. If we don't do this, right now everybody wants to own a car. Every car manufacturer would… His dream is to sell at least one car to every family. If every family in the country has one car, where will you build the roads? You will have to do flying cars, all right? There is not even enough airspace, I'm telling you. Our population is such. Once we have such a population, we have to think differently. It's very, very important. Right now, we are busy, busy building airports and airports. I am not against it, but in India, right now, two hours ahead, you have to go to the airport and do all that uh, things. I decided I will rather ride a, my motorcycle to Mumbai than uh, go to the airport, wait there for two hours, go through all those tests, wear a mask and sit like you're going into space or something. I'm not going to do that. I'm saying, if you… if every highway that you're building, in the center, if you put a rail line and people are asking, do we need bullet train, we, do we need that? We need something faster than a bullet, if you ask me. Because for 1.4 billion people, you are not going to fly them. You are trying to imitate the American model, it's just silly. You cannot fly 1.4 billion people. The best way to transport them is always rail, because rail is a mass transport. If the faster you make it, for, suppose Coimbatore to Bangalore, if you build a rail line, which is just uh, 350 kilometers, if you can do it in one hour, the development will happen all along. Even if you stop in five different places and take one and a half hours, people will work here, there and along the way, the whole thing will develop. Unless we spread this, unless we spread the investment and in turn the development, there is no way. Right now, these proposals, we've given it to the government also, talking about how Industry should spread all over the place. This concentration has done, created this migrant population and you have seen the disaster, how they are going through their lives. 
and over five crore uh, uh, labor is working for your industry. And uh, I think a whole lot of migrant labor walking back are also these. Why have they left their villages, their homestead and come here? Simply because there's no livelihood there. We need to create it right there as much as possible. A small number coming is okay. Such a massive population moving means there is such degradation of life, especially for women and children of those families. It's terrible what they go through. Once they come to the city, they may have little more money, but the quality of their life and the basic dignity of their existence, which they had in the village even if they are very poor, is completely taken away once they come to the slum, dehumanization of a human being happens and that is not the way we should build this nation. It's all of you should plan, I'm just giving you a simple idea, but we must look at this, how we must live more vertical spaces and more pla you know, pla more forested areas around us. Everybody should have access to some kind of nature. So every, every child should hear bird calls and see animals running, doing this, doing that, all this must happen. Otherwise, we will not grow a healthy nation. It's very, very important to do this now. Thank you for that. Uh, actually, my DG Kredai... My next project will be like that. Well, 